When I was 18, almost 10 years ago, I had a phone call that completely changed my life. I got woken up at almost 6am by an unknown number. I figured it was my boyfriend, now husband, since his phone usually showed up as the famous unknown number. He usually called me before going to work at around 7.30am, but sometimes he'd call me at 6ish if he wanted to talk to me while waking up. I answer and he says, Hey baby. And I'm still half asleep but start talking. He tells me he has a little problem and that he's feeling really, uh, you know, being 18 and having to start dating him recently. Let's just say I was very willing to, uh, you know, go and help his demands. So we start and he tells me how he absolutely loved seeing me last weekend, how good I looked, how he absolutely loved my hot red panties. He basically described what we had done during the weekend and how much he loved some of the things I did to him. I replied, I was more and more awake and we were having a really good time. Then, I noticed it was almost 7am and basically asked him, So this is fun and all but aren't you going to get ready for work? This is giving me chills typing this, but he basically replied, Uh, no, I think I'll skip work today. What about I come over? Now, the thing is, by then I was pretty awake and although the voice that was talking to me was very similar to my boyfriend's, something threw me off. My boyfriend doesn't say the, uh, no, like he does. And besides, I knew that unless he was ill, my boyfriend would never skip work because he was scheduled on shifts and missing a shift was a big deal that could get him fired. I kind of froze. He noticed it, so he said, Oh, babe, you alright? I should start getting dressed. So, you want me to come over? By then, I swear that his voice was back to my boyfriend's voice and I just felt silly. So what if he wanted to skip a day at work? Maybe he just wanted to see me. So, I tell him, yeah, sure, come over. It will only be us here. He replied, great. Then he asked, where is it? Wait, what? He'd been coming over for weeks now. I laugh it off and tell him, Huh? You know where it is. That's when he laughed and his laugh was absolutely not my boyfriend's laugh. I instantly told him, You're not my boyfriend, are you? He said, Can you just hang on please? Um, I need to grab something. Meanwhile, I get a text from my actual boyfriend and I figure that maybe, maybe this is just a sick joke. Maybe he coordinated it perfectly. Maybe he's ill and his voice doesn't sound the same. The text from my boyfriend said, At the subway, going to work now, love you. I texted him back saying, Why are you texting me? We are talking right now. At which point my actual boyfriend called. He was very confused at first and figured that someone had hacked into his MSN. When I told him that it was by phone, he reassured me that he absolutely did not call me and that whoever it was, was not him. He had to go because the subway train was there, but he will call me as soon as he was at work. Then, the other guy called back. I picked up, and I asked him, Who are you? What do you want? I pretty much went crazy on him. He said that his name was Mike, that we met a long time ago, which was impossible because my phone number was fairly recent, and that he just wanted to have fun, and that he didn't know I had a boyfriend. I asked him how he knew what I was wearing and about my red panties and what we did and how he got my phone number. He just said, Where are you? Why don't we just meet? At which point I hang up. He called again and I didn't answer. Within minutes, I had called my mum to tell her what happened. She told me to change my phone number and not to stay at home alone. I changed my phone number right away. I also alerted local police. They opened a file, but nothing ever came out of it. I still wonder how he knew about what me and my boyfriend did and what I was wearing. My boyfriend swore at the time that he would never tell any of his friends what we did, but his parents' house did have lots of windows and we weren't exactly careful. This happened to me last summer. I'm a 22-year-old woman living in a small to mid-sized city. 
This happened to come up today with my co-worker and thought it would be good to share. Although I hadn't thought of it for a while, at the time I got pretty depressed and scared for about a month at least. I worked at a coffee shop that was open until midnight, yes, midnight, in a neighbourhood that isn't exactly known for its nightlife, although it isn't entirely dead after dark either. But apart from a diner a few blocks away, a pizza shop across the street, the bar on the corner and the 24-7 convenience store and pharmacy, we were the only place open that late. Closing shift workers worked alone, but I had never been particularly bothered by it. I had lived in the neighborhood for a while, and I had heard one store of a woman my age being mugged near the shop, but other than that, things were fairly quiet. I lived about a 30 minute walk away, but at that hour, I typically took the bus. Usually the last one came at around 1 in the morning, which was enough time for me to close and still catch it. One night, I had just finished up at around 12.30. As I exited the shop and began to turn left, the direction of my bus stop. I saw a man walking down the sidewalk towards me to my right, so that when I started down the sidewalk, he was behind me going in the same direction that I was. It was a Saturday, so it wasn't particularly unusual for someone to be out at that hour. I figured he was headed up towards the bar, which I would pass on the way to the shop, and anyway, he was a good distance away, and yet, I still had a bad feeling. As I walked, nearing the corner, I heard his footsteps quicken. I instinctively slowed, wanting to believe that he was going to pass me. But instead, he matched my pace once he was beside me, so that we walked side by side. I stiffened, but continued to walk. He kept about two feet between us and was muttering something. It seemed like he might be mentally ill, but I listened to what he was saying, and when I made out what he was saying, I went cold. Shouldn't have come out tonight, he said, over and over. It's a bad night, shouldn't have come out. It's a bad night, shouldn't have come out. I had no idea if he was talking to me or to himself or what, but I was afraid. I suddenly felt like I was going to die. We passed the bar. I should have gone in and asked for help. But I had this absurd thought that since I didn't have my ID, they would card me and I didn't want to make a scene. I reached the corner with him beside me. I hesitated a moment to make a decision and he waited beside me as I did. He'd stopped muttering. The bus stop lay across the street on the opposite corner. No cars or people were in sight. On that corner across the street was the 24-7 convenience store. It was brightly lit the only beacon in the otherwise silent and very dark night. I decided I would go in the store to see if he followed me. Part of me was still convinced that I was imagining it, overthinking it, being silly. I didn't want to think he was following me, and when the automatic doors whooshed open to let me in, part of me was sure that he wouldn't be at my heels. I didn't look over my shoulder to check, but I didn't hear the doors open for him either or his first steps. I relaxed, felt relief. He gave up or he was never following me in the first place. I walked over to the shampoo section. I had been meaning to buy shampoo anyway and I might as well get something out of my silliness. I stood there staring at my options when out of the corner of my eye, at the end of the aisle, I saw him walk by. Immediately I felt sick again. I picked up the shampoo I wanted and started wandering around the store in a panic without seeing him, but then it occurred to me that he might corner me in the abandoned part. We were the only people in there besides the two cashiers, so I quickly walked to the front, searching for where he was. I saw him at the makeup counter a short distance away, sitting in the stool and facing me and staring. I put the shampoo down on the counter. My heart was racing and I couldn't think straight. I had no idea what I was going to do next. If I left, he would follow me. I couldn't walk home because he would follow me there. I couldn't wait at the bus stop because he would be there. Just as the transaction finished, I got the nerve. Excuse me, I know this sounds weird, but I think that guy over there is following me. I said to the cashier. I sounded sheepish, bashful, 
not at all terrified like I really felt inside. Maybe that was why the cashier didn't take me seriously. He shrugged and laughed. I was about to kick him out for loitering. My face fell as I watched him walk from behind the counter towards the man. I knew that if he kicked him out of the store before I left, I would be doomed because he would be out there waiting for me. I composed myself the best I could, put the shampoo in my tote bag and walked out the doors. I don't really know what I was thinking when I turned right instead of going left towards my bus stop. Doing so took me past the window where I could clearly see into the front of the store. I saw the cashier reach him and start to say something, but he was staring at me. As soon as he saw me, he jumped and ran towards the front door. God knows why, but I started sprinting. I'm small and weak and have zero stamina, so there was no way I'd stand a chance even if I was running for my life. But I ran, and just as I did, my bus turned around the corner. The next stop was at the end of the block, so far away from where I was. I felt defeated, but I just kept running. My mind went blank as I watched the bus pass me. And then it stopped at the bus stop, for some strange reason. Never have I ever encountered such a merciful bus driver. And it stopped there, waiting for me. I jumped on, completely out of breath, but with fresh panic, because I had no idea if the man had got on behind me. He didn't. I sat down and started crying quietly. I told my manager the next day, she stopped putting me on closing shifts for a while, and it took several other incidents of harassment however until the owners finally agreed to let us close at 10 instead of midnight. I happened to know one of the managers at the store he'd followed me into, and I considered asking to see the surveillance tapes, maybe make some effort to catch him, but all I really wanted to do was put the whole thing behind me.